All right, so I'm gonna do a little traction control update. Last video that I was talking about this, I was using a VR to Hall Effect Sensor Converter, and I believe I fried the converter. So I contacted the company. It was working. I did the video showing that it was working. Next day I went out to go drive it. I did some pulls and saw that the traction control was not working because the front wheel speed sensor wasn't working. So I came home. Uh, I spent like probably four hours troubleshooting it, trying to figure out what was going on, tested the converter, and eventually I emailed the company and, and I asked if they had a uh, preferred method of testing the converter to make sure that it was working properly. And in their response, they let me know how I could test it. And then they said that the Holly power tap is actually not a clean signal or something. And it typically fries the converter. So or typically blows out the chip. Uh, so that was a little bit disappointing. They did give me a recommendation for a different converter box that has a voltage regulator inside of it. But instead of spending the 40 something dollars on that, I just decided to spend the like $69, I think it was on a low dollar motorsports Hall effect sensor. So that's what I have in the truck now. That's working fine. Uh, very simple to install. I just built like a little steel bracket for it, drilled two holes in it. I'm not using the factory speed sensor, but I did use a, a caliper to measure the distance on the speed sensor, how far the mounting point was from the end of the pickup. So then when I installed the low dollar, I did the exact same thing, measured it was 1.06 inches, I believe it was from the mounting point to the end of the sensor. Set that up where it needed to be, bolted it on, wired it up, and it was pretty simple install. Big thing was going out today and actually testing the traction control to make sure that it is working. So good news is it is working. Bad news is I don't think it's going to work for this truck the way that it's set up right now. So I'm going to do I'm going to need to do more than just use traction control to pull timing, especially for street driving. So I think for street driving on this thing, I'm going to have to go with a lower spring. I'll probably have to put like a four pound spring in it. It's making like 10 pounds on wastegate, 10 to 12 pounds. So I'm definitely just going to spring the thing down and just make less power on gate on the street because I don't think it's going to be able to pull enough timing to really make a difference at all. The good thing is I, I could tell when it was pulling timing and I was able to lift, uh, but it still was in that like 20 to 25 mile per hour wheel spin area where the point for me where I get uncomfortable with the truck and want to lift, it's about 20 to 25 miles an hour wheel spin is when I usually lift. I do have this drive not working log. I'm not gonna go over that one. It's just a regular data log. Wheel speed sensor's not working. Traction control's not working. Uh, but I have this traction control 30 to 50 and traction control 70 to 90. So we'll look at 30 to 50 first. So you can see this line here as this comes up, these are the wheel speed sensors. So this reddish color, is the front wheel speed, the green one is the rear wheel. You can see down here, if I click right here, we're at 17 and 17. As it starts to come up, it's at 25 and 25. And then right here in this area is where the rear wheel speed starts to deviate from the front, and that's where the wheel speed starts to come in. So here you can see 31 mile an hour front, 32 rear, a little bit farther. Now we're at 35 front and 48 rear. And right here, this purple line is actually starting to pull down the timing. So traction control is pulling five degrees of timing at this point. You can see wheel speed starts to come up and deviate a little bit more. Now we're at 39 and 63 rear wheel speed. So you're at about 23 miles per hour of spin at this point, and it's pulling 10 degrees of timing. So this part here with the wheel spin is actually modulated because of the throttle position here. As you can see, I started the lift and then got back into it. So as the wheel started to correct, that was because I lifted, not because of the traction control hooking the tire back up, uh, but I was able to catch it safely. Uh, at this point, when this one was pulling, it's actually like kind of backfiring a little bit. You can hear it because it yanks a bunch of timing and then you can hear it pop in the exhaust. Yeah, so at that point, it's pulling 12 degrees of timing. My actual ignition timing is like three degrees, but it does show that it's all working. So on this on this section here, at a little bit higher speed on this one, so the blue line here, you can see it's actually starting to use traction control too. So I have two tables set up. One works up until about 70 miles per hour. One starts to work 70 miles per hour but right at 50 mile per hour front wheel speed is when it actually started to use that table and that's because I had it set up to activate at 50 miles per hour. So what I did in the tune was I changed that table, the second table to activate 
at about 69, 70 miles per hour. I might increase it a little bit because it starts actually, it seems like it starts working in anticipation of that table coming on. But here you can see traction control one is working, traction control two is working. So at this point, it's actually trying to transition from table one to table two. So it's pulling 11 degrees of timing on traction one, and then it's trying to transition to the other table where it'll actually pick it up. So I didn't roll into that one or ride into that one long enough to actually transfer completely over to the second table because that's like above 70 miles per hour with wheel spin. So that's still uh, kind of fast. So let's look at this um, 70 to 90 log. And you can see up here at the top, this little purple line, it's kind of like tickling the traction control as I'm cruising. It's not a lot that it's pulling right here, but you can see that it's actively, actively working. So it's only pulling 0.1 degrees. 0.2 degrees. So it's not pulling any more than like a quarter to a half a degree up there, but you can see that it is kind of uh, act actively using the traction control. So here, same thing. We have 62 and 61. It starts to deviate and it's actually pulling timing right here. So this section up here, it's starting to pull one degree and it is 65 miles per hour front wheel speed and 67 rear wheel speed. So as it's starting to pull away, two miles an hour wheel spin, it's pulling one degree. And here as it starts to deviate a little bit more, 65 miles per hour front, 70 rear, it's pulling two degrees, and you can see it just progressively pulls more as the wheel spin increases. And then this little blip right here, that's traction control two coming on the second table and I changed the setting to 69 miles per hour. And you can see if I click on that area where traction control two is starting to work, it's at 67 miles per hour. So it's like, seems like it's working a little bit ahead of time in anticipation of that activation at 69 miles per hour. So it's starting to work and transition over to the second table, but I didn't stay in it long enough to actually get the front wheel speed into like above 70 miles per hour. I think the peak on this whole log was 71 miles per hour. So I didn't actually fully transition to the second table, but you can see that it was actually starting to work. The so same kind of story here, front and rear wheel speed are pretty close. I do have the scaling on this one slightly different between the two. That's why they're separated a little bit. I just did that because I wanted to be able to see both lines. So I separated them by a couple miles per hour. If they were matching, the lines would be exactly overlapping for the majority of it, but I, for me, just personal preference, I wanted to actually see both lines. Here you go, 60 miles per hour, it starts to pull away to a three mile an hour wheel spin. It's starting to activate and pulling a half a degree of timing. Here it's a 14 mile an hour wheel spin, pulling six degrees of timing. And this one went all the way up to about 23 miles per hour of wheel spin. 69 front and 92 rear wheel speed and it's pulling traction control one is pulling 8.9 degrees traction two is pulling 7.9 so there what it's doing if you watch this section it goes from pulling nine degrees to zero and then it starts to transition and add in the same amount of timing pull as traction one has it adds it into traction two and then it would transfer over to traction two so during that quick transition you would be pulling the same amount of timing. But again, I, I lifted before I fully transferred into that second table. So overall, this does seem like it's working. If this was in a track setting with a better tire and it had like a little bit of wheel spin or it was just starting to spin like maybe five to 10 miles per hour, it would pull enough timing, I feel like with a decent tire to hook it back up. This truck I think is just not gonna, not gonna work on the street, especially with these tires. Because if you look at this log right here, it's 4,700 RPM, 42% throttle, uh, 10 pounds of boost, and it only has eight degrees ignition in it. 70 mile an hour wheel speed. So 70 mile an hour front wheel speed, truck is moving 70 miles an hour. I get to about 40% throttle and it's already starting to blow the tires off. So I don't think any amount of real traction control, like timing pull is gonna be able to correct that. I think I just need to spring it lower and run less wastegate. I'd rather run less boost than be yanking timing out of it all the time. I would like it to have the ability to, to pull the timing if needed, but the real correction I think for this situation to street drive this thing is to just spring it lower so it's not making as much power and then you can just run off your base timing table unless you really have a problem and then it wants to yank the timing. So overall, everything's working. So I will go over the overall setup again. So I have an input using digital speed frequency for front wheel speed. I'll go into configure. I have this set on miles per hour. Pulses to average, I set it to one. 
54 pulses per rotation on my brake rotor. I have 54 different pickups on that for one revolution. Gear ratio is at one because there's not a differential between the pickup and the wheel. And I have a 29 and a half inch wheel diameter. So if I were to put like a 28 inch tire on the back of this and I kept the fronts, the front tire the same, but say I went to the track and I put a 28 on there, I would have to change the rear wheel in the transmission section. I would have to change this to a 28 inch tire, otherwise it would, it would throw it off. So it would always look like the rear wheels spinning faster than the front. As far as the actual table setup in the 2D tables, I have table one and table two. These are both uh, traction control one and traction control two. The X axis is speed, Y axis is front wheel speed. I have the advanced enable on and front wheel speed above 15 miles per hour. So this will allow me to still be able to do the burnout at the track and not have the traction control enable. The table would come on above 15 miles per hour like after the after it launches and then you could use like a launch retard for timing control between your launch and the 15 mile an hour point traction control 2 i have set to go on above 70 because that's where this table starts to activate and then if i click on this data log here if i click let's say like down here in this section where we're at 48 and 49 if i go on to the tune that shows me that i'm in this area right here so 47, so it's at 48, and then at this 49 mark. So we're right in this area, it's not pulling any timing. As we start to come up in this area where we start to see some wheel spin, we're at 67 miles per hour and 90 mile per hour rear wheel speed. That's this section right here. So we're at 67 miles per hour and then 90 mile per hour rear wheel speed, and it's pulling that 9.4 degrees of timing. Well, the table set at 9.4, and traction control is at 8.9. So it's right, right in that area where it needs to be. So the way I set this up was at 20 miles per hour to 70 and then 21 to 90 and basically just have it starting to pull timing out when the rear wheel speed is above the front wheel speed. And as it progressively goes higher, it just pulls more timing. So I don't think, I'm probably gonna modify this a little bit. I don't think I want it to actually pull up to 30 degrees of timing. I think about that 10 to 15 is maybe where I would be comfortable with it pulling timing. I don't really feel like I wanna run, like say you're at 18 degrees of timing and it pulls 15 out of it, you're at three degrees. There was a couple points in the log where it's actually at zero degrees. I don't really wanna to spend too much time there. So I think for this truck, I'll have to spring it down a little bit. A couple of questions I had about this so far were, could you use like a, a drive-by-wire offset or a boost offset? And you could do that too. So if you're using like CO2 boost controller and targeting boost, you could have this actually pull boost out instead of pulling timing, or you could do a combination of both, or you could actually do a drive-by-wire offset. This is a drive-by cable truck, but this is set up to be able to do a drive-by-wire offset. So if you have a drive-by-wire throttle, you could essentially be wide open with your foot and then have the computer actually closing the throttle until the the wheel speed matches. So there's really quite a few different ways you could do it and that kind of seems like it's working for me for now. I think I might desensitize it a little bit just so it's not pulling that half degree or quarter of a degree while I'm cruising. I'd like to kind of widen that up a little bit so it's not tickling the traction control the whole time I'm driving. I just want to go over that stuff. Uh, everything seems like it's working. This truck now I think that will probably be my last uh, driving video for a while. I'm going to do some other work over the winter uh, you can see I got a couple boxes here. Those are actually new front fenders. So I'm going to be replacing the front fenders. They're just metal fenders. They're not like fiberglass or anything. They're pretty light anyways, but my fenders are all dinged up. I'm going to be doing like a new roll pan, new, uh, new tailgate. I do want to put a cage in it. So that'll probably be the next like big project. So I think what I'm going to start working on next is I'm probably going to run like a tank of 93 through the gas tank at the E85 out of it and then start to pull the engine and transmission and get everything ready to start put the cage and stuff in it. I'm pulling the engine and transmission because I wanna redo the firewall. I'd like to maybe do some wheel tubs in the front and I got a, kind of a lot of stuff that I wanna redo over the winter, get it ready for next year and then like finishing the AC, the air conditioning. I wanna do like a vintage air setup, get the AC and heat working, firewall, clean up the engine bay a little bit more, maybe do like a rubber floor, get the carpet out of there. I might do like a rubber or vinyl floor. So just kind of stuff like that. Um, I feel like engine and transmission, all that stuff is working well. I'll probably check the oil. Uh, I have 
a decent amount of miles and a lot of dyno pulls on it now. So I'll do a good oil check on it, make sure everything's still healthy. So stick around for that stuff.